this is Captain Chaudhary. I want to speak to you about precision of equinoxes. What is this precision of equinoxes? To understand this term, let's first understand what is precision and then we will talk about the equinoxes. Precision is the inherent property of a free gyroscope whereby whenever a torque is applied to the axle of the gyroscope, the axle would move in a direction perpendicular to the applied torque and we can find out the direction in which the axle would precess. Here is a disc of a rotor. These are the axles. Let us say I am viewing from this side. I am looking at this face and as I look at this face I find the rotor turning anti-clockwise. Now I try to apply some force here. If I am applying a force like this vertically it means that a torque is being applied to the axle. The torque is applied in the plane of board. We say that this blackboard is the plane of torque. Now this axle instead of moving downwards it will move in a plane perpendicular to the plane of torque. Where does it move? Let's find it out. What you have to do is the force that is applied on this axle and the face that you are watching on that same face you put an arrow parallel to the applied force direction and radially outwards that means you can't paste this arrow over here you have to paste the arrow radially outwards when I paste it like this what do you think after 90 degrees turn which way the arrow will point it will point towards outside the board this means that this particular axle uh, when I see from here the disc is turning anti-clockwise, this particular axle instead of going down will come out of the board and this axle will go inside the board. This is because of the precision. This is the earth. Let us say this is the axis of spin of the earth. So this is equator. Here is the equatorial bulge. As you know equatorial diameter is more than the polar diameter there is this extra mass on the equatorial areas now if this is the axis of rotation uh, can i say uh, in this can i say in the celestial sphere this is the celestial pole okay 23 and a half degrees from the plane of equator we have the plane of ecliptic and on the ecliptic you should definitely find sun. Uh, ecliptic is a plane that is made by the center of sun and the earth for sure. There may not be any other heavenly body in this plane but it is must that the center of the sun and the center of the earth is in the plane of ecliptic. So perpendicular to the plane of ecliptic somewhere here we have ecliptic pole. We will call it K. So ecliptic pole, celestial pole. Now what is happening is somewhere close to the ecliptic because the plane of moon's orbit is five and a quarter degrees to the plane of ecliptic and therefore on the ecliptic or maybe a little bit here and there we should find a moon. So let us say there is a situation that the moon is also part of ecliptic. Now moon is looking at this 50% of the earth and sun is looking at the other 50% of the earth. The moon's gravitational pull wants to pull the earth but what is happening is in respect of moon this 50% of the earth balances this 50% of the earth. There is no bias but there is this extra force but there is this extra weight of the earth which in a way is attracted additionally by the moon as if the moon is pulling the string and trying to attract this extra weight and in a similar way as the sun looks at this half of the earth sun finds this extra weight which is concentrated here and tries to pull this by moon trying to pull this weight and sun trying to pull this weight they are telling the axis of the earth as if you better come and get synchronized with this axis which is the axis of ecliptic pole. So for ages, for centuries and for millions of years, moon and sun both are trying 
that this axle instead of pointing towards the celestial pole points towards the ecliptic pole. Now if you look at the earth spinning from top in an anti-clockwise fashion like this if you put an arrow parallel and radially outwards in the disk of the equator as you see from top this arrow will turn this way which means that instead of going towards the ecliptic pole the celestial pole will move in a direction tangent to the radius right and this keeps happening this keeps happening and in the bargain the celestial pole makes a circle of 23 and a half degrees approximately around the ecliptic pole and this process continues it continues but the axle is never going to be synchronized with the ecliptic pole it makes a circle around the ecliptic pole this takes about 25,800 years the earth's axis of rotation points towards a star which is at celestial pole but as you know celestial pole is not fixed it makes a circle around the ecliptic pole but as I told you we are lucky in this particular millennium or century that the earth's axis of rotation is pointing towards this pole star we are able to get position line very fast and we are able to get the compass error very fast but this will not happen in all the centuries now Thuban was a pole star about 3500 years BC so in that particular century and millennium those people enjoyed the presence of uh, Thuban at the celestial pole now 12,000 years before from today 12,000 years ago Biga was the pole star in Vedic language it is stated that Abhijit, Abhijit was the name of the pole star will fall down in altitudes I mean this was predicted that time the precision of equinox was known looks like our Vedic period was a period when Vega was the pole star right and that time when they talked about a pole star it was not the present day Polaris it was the Vega and similarly 3500 years BC uh, there was another pole star that is Thuban probably pyramids were built during that period the age in which pyramids were built there was some star which was guiding these people architects in another diagram this is a celestial sphere this is equinoctial and this is ecliptic this may be called as first point of Aries and Libra over here the sun's upward journey that is change of declination from south to north happens at first point of Aries and then Libra now this first point of Aries which is the meeting point which is one of the meeting points of equinoctial with ecliptic now this is equinoctial and this is ecliptic these are the common points the two points they regress westwards because of precision of equinoxes which I explained to you just now now this Aries slides uh, westward because of the precision that is caused because of Sun and Moon's gravitational pull this is called unisolar uh, precision which is about 50.3 seconds per year which will complete the journey in about uh, 25,800 years as I told you 12,000 years ago Vega was the pole star and after about 13,800 years Vega is going to be pole star once again and in between there's going to be no pole star so enjoy the pole star's presence at the pole as much as you can now Aries moves westward regresses westward slides westward on ecliptic by 50.3 seconds per year there is some amount of planetary precision also because of which the total rate becomes 50.26 seconds per year because of precision of equinox naturally what is going to happen suppose there is a star very close to the first point of Aries and of say for example zero declination now this star's SHA is going to change every year by this amount 50.26 seconds now if the star has got some declination the rate will be different that can be calculated but what I want to basically tell you is the so called fixed points in the space stars for example they are not fixed as far as the SHA is concerned the SHA will gradually change because of the precision of equinox now 
as we know that the moon's orbit is five and a quarter degrees inclined to the ecliptic ecliptic is the home of earth and uh, a sun this gravitational pull increases and decreases because of the relative position of moon and sun with respect to earth number one and number two the orbit of moon being not synchronized with the ecliptic so because of this what happens is there is variation cyclic variation of gravitational pull that causes the path of so suppose this is equinoctial and uh, this is k the ecliptic four the path is not perfectly circular it is wavy and this wavy path causes what is called as mutation and because of this path being wavy what happens is if you imagine that this is ecliptic and this is equinoctial they kind of fluctuate they come together go away come together go away and as you know the declination is measured from the equinoctial and out of equinoctial and ecliptic we may say that ecliptic is more or less fixed the equinoctial is fluctuating so because the equinoctial is fluctuating in space because of that what will happen is so called the fixed points in the space or the star their declination keeps fluctuating keeps changing because of nutation so nutation and precession of equinox are the two processes the phenomena because of which the SHA and declination might appear changing. Obliquity of ecliptic also will fluctuate because of the nutation.